Alrighty, with Wrestle Kingdom in our rearview mirror. What the what the hell are you doing? Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. You ever seen a man say goodbye to a Wrestle Kingdom Tokyo Dome show? <laughs> Once. But in all seriousness, while Wrestle Kingdom 17 was truly a landmark event when it came to some particular matches, the main event matches certainly delivered. Oh boy, oh boy. There were certainly some uncomfortable moments, but some great moments. But now we're ready to dash into the new year with... Beatdowns, angles, angles of beatdowns, and also an unexpected dream team that was also expected, yet unexpected, but expected at the same time. Does that make any sense? Probably not, but let's get to it, shall we? I'm John Renton with my review, New Japan Pro Wrestling's New Year's Dash. There we go. So let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. This isn't going to take very long. I watched this when I had some free time at work because I was like, all right, I had to work an 11-hour shift. I was really, really goddamn tired, so I wanted to catch up on New Year's Dash, and honestly, this card was okay. It was just thrown together. I mean, they said, oh, nobody's going to know who their opponents are until they get to the ring. I think some people may have known, but that being said, they certainly sold the shock. Holy shit, we got some alliances and a whole bunch of stuff, and we got a few cool things. <clears throat> And the matches didn't really matter, but it was more about the beatdowns and the angles and the angles of the beatdowns, as I said. So we get Wrestle Kingdom clips, and then now into the show. Kevin Kelly, Chris Charlton, and Gino Gambino on commentary. It's Hanma, Tiger Mask, and Ren Narita against House of Torture with Dick inserted. Oh boy, Dick repeatedly inserting himself where he doesn't belong. House of Torture. House of Torture has to go. I'm sorry. They have to go. I don't mind heel factions. House of Torture has to go. And later we got some cane shots and Hanma got pinned. That's really all I got to say about that. Ren Narita got beaten down. Suzuki shows up and then they they beat him down and he lost his hat. Oh boy, you angered Suzuki by <clears throat> making him lose his hat. It's Bernardo Suzuki. He's still the same murder grandpa or whatever he is, but he's got a new hat. I want him, I want him, I want him. Anyway, nevertheless. So he takes out a couple of people and then gets... Uh, beaten down a little bit and then here, here's El Desperado so former Suzuki Goon members even though Suzuki Goon is dissolved they're still friends Ren Narita possibly becoming a bit of an apprentice so to speak to Minoru Suzuki teaming up with El Desperado sign me the fuck up I would love to see that and it also seems like they might challenge House of Torture for the never open weight six man championships which yes still exist for some reason <laughs> so Tai Chi comes out with Taka and Doki and Kanemaru. And they're a new group. Just four guys instead of just tap out. Come on over here. Ah, talk. I, I like Taka. They're using him as a mouthpiece. I mean, he can still work. But honestly, him being, you know, a player coach, so to speak, is probably the better. Or maybe a coach player. You know, maybe being a little bit more on the sidelines. Getting in there when it means something. He can take the pain. You don't take anything off the group. But it's Tai Chi, Doki, and Kanemaru with Taka. Against TJP, Akira, and Will Ospreay, who was beat to shit. I don't know how Will Ospreay was necessarily walking after him and Kenny Omega literally beat the blood and piss out of each other. Especially in the case of Ospreay. A lot of blood. God, that was a lot of blood. Um, who were the heels here, I wrote down? <clears throat> because TJP acts like a heel. Akira sort of is a tweener and Ospreay. I'm not saying the full-fledged face, but people ooh and off for him. So anyway, um... So <laughs> the trap pin gets Akira, so I guess we're getting Kanemaru and uh, Doki teaming up against the IWGP Junior Heavyweight uh, Tag Team Champions. I, I believe they beat them in uh, Best of Super Juniors, or the Best of Super Junior uh, <coughs> Tag League Tournament or Super Junior Tag League, wherever that uh, whole wordy goddamn thing is. If they want to get a shot and they were the ones that cost them basically a chance in the finals, it makes sense, you know, help wrap up this little chapter. And then, then we get uh, another beat down, the second beat down of the night in the second match. And then Taka gets low blowed, and this kept going. <laughs> and then we have Zack Sabre Jr., Shane Haystead, Mikey Nichols. Not TMDK, but ZSDK, as I'm calling them. Taking on Bishamon, Yoshihashi, and Goto, along with Tomohiro Ishii. I want to see how Zack Sabre Jr. does as a leader. And you know what? The match was fine. It was fine for what it was. Um, it... I'm all for Zack Sabre Jr. getting featured a little bit more. Still don't know about the blonde hair. But nevertheless, Yoshihashi took the pin, so at least we have that. And if that means Haste and Nichols get a shot and, you know, get to have a good match with uh, Goto and Yoshihashi, good. I'm all for it. And Zack Sabre Jr. decides to take Fuja, a young line, and make him part of ZSDK. Okay. 
Pooja does seem confused. He mentioned something about John Mo you know, and not taking 18 years for him to get a young boy. You know, screw you, John Moxley. That was kind of funny. Speaking of John Moxley, here's Shota Umino because he's, you know, <laughs> Shooter Umino. Shota Umino, Taguchi, Yo, and Makabe against LIJ. LIJ minus Shingo because he's in a match a little bit later. And minus Teton. I forgot Teton was a de facto <laughs> sorry, Teet, a de facto member of LIJ. Um, I'm over Taguchi's antics. I'm over them. I, I just, I'm done. I'm done with the antics. Uh, Shota wants to crack at Naito. I'm all for them having a feud. And we get a melee. The Poison Run is stupid. I, I, I will stand by that. Whether it's an indie show, a, bi a big show, I don't care. I don't care what company it is. But Direct Drive pins Hiromu. So Yo and Hiromu running it back like a Best of Super Junior, um, the finals in 2021. All for it. And then Jay is yelling at Chris Charlton for some reason. And then we get El Phantasmo, Taiji Ishimori, Kenta, and Jay Waito against Tamatanga, Master Wato, Tanahashi, and Hikaleo. Is the usual club BS? This is more about Jay White being angry at Tamatanga, but especially Hikaleo for the betrayal and causing the downfall where Jay suddenly wasn't focused somehow and that caused him to lose the title. A little bit weird. But Gato runs in with the Never Open Weight Championship and then El Phantasmo hits people in the head and that causes a DQ. And then I guess we're getting El Phantasmo versus Tama, which if you cut down the antics might actually be pretty good. And then, you know, Jay White helps beat down Hikaleo along with, you know, a few others and yells at Hikaleo, hey, it's going to be a loser leaves Japan. Unless Hikaleo is going to go out for like a year and go somewhere else and they're going to wrap this up, is Jay White going to leave Japan? Is he going to go be part of the New Zealand or Australia? <laughs> is it New Zealand? Whatever brand they have. Um, if he's going to do that, that's fine. I believe he is from New Zealand. But... Is his contract up soon? What is going to happen? When is this Loser Leaves Japan thing happening? Watch it happen at, the, I think, the Yokohama show or something like that. Bit weird. Bit out of nowhere. Wonder what's going on. Yano, Shingo, Sho, and uh, the Great Okan had a four-way KOPW championship match. And I'm over the house of torture shit. And, well, there was a... <laughs> Last of Dragon pin Yano. There was a... Table bump of torture. There were, you know, it's a mess here. Okan wants a crack at Shingo. Okay. At least Show didn't win. And I like Show. But anyway, Jeff Cobb and Aaron Hanare taking on Kenny Omega and Kazuchika Okada, IWGP US and IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. The guys have had one of the better, if not one of the best feuds in New Japan in the last number of years. It's arguable, depends on your perspective. They certainly did deliver in their matches. That two out of three falls match at Dominion 2018 still um, one of the standards, one of my favorite matches of the last decade. It was quite, quite good. And if they, it, it seems like we're going to get Cobb versus Omega at some point. <clears throat> um, and we're getting Okada and Omega in a champion uh, versus champion match. And we got a melee and then we got a... We got a Rainmaker and V-Trigger combination, and Rainmaker 1, 2, 3. Then Shingo challenges Okada. That's really all I have to say about that. It was cool that Omega and Okada were, because I'm no fan of Omega. Said that before, I'll keep I'll keep with it. Same with Osprey. But that being said, I still have to praise their match at Wrestle Kingdom 17. Check out my review if you haven't yet. The match was, or the show was okay. Not bad. Let's see what happens uh, for the New Beginning Tour. I don't know how many... New Japan shows I'll be reviewing <clears throat> later this month. It depends on time. It depends on work schedule. And it just depends on exhaustion. Because I can only review so much of three individual wrestling promotions. Along with movies and also having a full-time job and needing sleep. So we'll see. It also depends on the cards. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.